This is a brief tutorial on uh, some of the functionality of the arrow uh, on the draw page in, in the collage. If we go up to help and go about TDO, you can see this is version 12.37G, which has been released for a general release. So the functionality I'm going to show is present in the general release of 12.37 G. So let's open up the image organizer and let's do a brief tutorial on the arrow in the draw page. To do that I'm going to come over to the library because I've assembled a group of images. The first thing to realize about the arrow function, let's go ahead and load this into draw by double by double clicking, is that the arrow all annotations occur on the image as a layer. They are not actually part of the image. And so when you have images of very different resolution, it gets complicated to the sizing of them. So the annotations are fixed to a DPI of 720 DPI, no matter what the resolution of the images is. For example, if you look at the bite wing and you look at the size of that image by clicking on uh, the details, I can see that the size of this image is only 820 kilobytes. It's a 14 by 1920. If I look at this image, this is a huge image. It's 13 and a half megabytes. It's 3000 pixels by 4000 pixels. So if you can imagine drawing an arrow on a picture like this versus a picture like this uh, creates a problem for the pr programmer. So let's see how we solve that problem. If I load this into draw and I choose the arrow, one thing you can do to make the arrows a little more consistent when you're drawing on different resolution images, and it isn't only the images, it's the resolution of your monitor. So if your monitor is a 4K monitor versus a, a 1K monitor, it makes a difference for how that layer looks. So if you go in to the defaults and come down to drawing tools, you'll have some parameters that you can specify for the arrow. I recommend uh, clicking this box to use the ratio of the length of the arrow to the head of the arrow. Otherwise, it gets really, really complicated with these different resolutions. So click this box. For most of your purposes, an arrow size of three is going to be appropriate. That isn't the actual size of the arrowhead. That's the size of the ratio of the head of the arrow to the line. And I found that a ratio of two to three works pretty well. You want to use the new type of arrowheads, and you also want to fill the arrowheads. Configure your defaults in this way first and see how that works for you. Now, when I come in to draw an arrow, I can specify the size of the uh, line on the arrow. I typically will use a, a size 10, and let's say we want to use a, a yellow. So when you go to put the arrow in, that's about the right size arrow that I like. So I know that um, I've got the the parameters set carefully. If I have a smaller line, it's harder to see the line. It's a smaller line. It depends on your preference. But you can control the width of this line and the size of the arrowhead. The, lo the longer you make it, the larger the arrowhead gets. That's what that end number is. It scales the size of the arrowhead uh, in relation to the length of the arrow. So most of you are going to do little arrows, so uh, any of these sizes probably work. Now let's do the same thing uh, with a very high resolution image and you can kind of see what the problem is. Coming over to the right to load a picture, double clicking. Now let's load this image and you can see from the details that it's 13.68 megs. It's a huge, huge image. I load that into the draw, and now if I draw an arrow on this, I'm gonna change the color, and let's go back to my line size of 10 so you can have something to compare it with. You can see it's a little tiny arrow because this image is, is so large. 
So you can make it larger. All you do to make it uh, appropriately sized is go up to a size 20 and make the arrow a little longer and it's, it's more appropriate for this size image. Now to answer a few questions about the collage is that has been mentioned on chat, uh, I thought we'd just go through a few things on how to change the order. So I've created this uh, arrow tutorial. I've brought in pictures from an old Charton lecture, I think back in 2015, and I have used the user-defined category, and I've arranged them I've arranged them in the order that I want. If I was going to use another order, let's say I was going to use just the, a date order, then the order in which I choose the images is the order in which they will appear in the collage. I found that it's just easier when I have my collection of images that I want to go to my user-defined order, and then I can actually uh, reorder these and it'll keep that order and then all I have to do is select them all and that's the order in which the, they will appear in the collage. So they've all been selected. I go up to collage and it will load them in, in, in collage. Now there's a few things I like to do uh, before I start. Typically I will add, I, will, I always want my labels in because it labels the radiographs it makes it easier uh, when you're trying to figure a case out. So that will automatically put the time date stamp on the, on the images. Now I have all of the images uh, on the canvas. I've already selected uh, my background, the size of the canvas uh, that I want, <clears throat> and whether I want borders or not. So now I have to arrange the images. Let's say I want to start with just two vertical images. Now it, it goes through the whole collage, places two images per page. So I have up to, I have 15 pages. That may change as I go through that. And you'll notice the dates are present uh, automatically because I have used labels. And now I want to maybe uh, adjust these a little bit. Like, remember, this is the very high resolution image. So I want to really zoom in on that. Maybe I want to show just one area. Let's say I want to show what the bundle bone looks like histologically. So pressing the shift key, I can move that image and position it exactly the way I want it. I go to page two. Here again, I want to maybe zoom in using my scroll mouse. I can position these. I go to page three, same thing here. I'm gonna zoom in. And I just go through page four. Now this is the end of the, of the series and I really want this on a separate sub slide. So now I change it. I go to a single slide per, 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 slide, per a page. And now it does that and look, it automatically creates many, many more pages. I select it, I fill the box, I come and center it, then I go to next page. I don't need to change anything like that, but I can if I want my slideshow to be maybe a little, little larger. I can control that. I go to the next slide. So I have a lot of control in, in the collage. These are just slides from a lecture. And I, I go through them. I want these as single, single pages. Here my fonts were small, so I want to maybe make them larger and now reposition them. This is one of my favorite statements from Laplace. Like this is the last page, so I will create a full size on that, only on the last page. And that, that makes it a full page. Now let's say I want to add a page. Now you'll notice I cannot take a page here and move it over to page 8. I cannot do that. Um, but I can add a page by coming up here to add. 
It adds page 15. Now I have a blank canvas, and I can go back and I can load one image, or let's say I want to load a series of image, and all I have to do is select them and drag them over. It puts them on, and then I have the ability to change the template again. And there they are. So that's just a brief tutorial on some of the things in, in the collage uh, and how to organize your pages and add pages.